In this video, I'm gonna do my very best to explain the magnetic timeline in a way that beginners can grasp it and quickly get started editing inside of Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna have all sorts of tips from beginning to advanced so that you can become an efficient editor inside of Final Cut Pro. The magnetic timeline receives its name because over here on the left hand side, imagine there is a giant magnet that is constantly pulling everything that's in this dark gray area over to the left hand side. If I were to take a clip of media and drag it down onto the timeline, rather than like most video editors where this would stay in place right here, it will actually slide over to the left hand side. And again, if I were to drag another piece of media over here to the right, it'll attach directly to that left hand side. If I have a third shot here, let's say I decide that I want this shot to be in between these two shots. Rather than needing to move one clip over here to the right side, move this in place, and then move this back, instead, click and drag this clip over into the middle, and now this clip has been pushed to the right hand side, whereas this clip has been pushed over to the left hand side. Think of it as having blocks on a sliding scale. These blocks are constantly trying to slide to that left side, and if you were to move a block in between, it would take up that space and the blocks would slide together and they'll all stay connected. While this gray portion is magnetic, the spaces above and below do not have that magnetic property. And if you have a clip attached above, just like so, you'll notice that it has a connection point. That blue line indicates that this specific clip is connected to this clip. So if I were to click and drag this clip over to a new position, you'll notice how this clip stays attached. This could be exceptionally powerful if you have a singular clip with a whole lot of audio effects or maybe video effects all attached above and below and you don't want to have to click and drag over all of them. You can do it all in just one foul swoop by clicking on this one single shot and moving it over. Now something to note in Final Cut Pro is that you're almost always going to have say your titles and your different graphics above in your timeline, whereas your audio elements will always be below. So if I were to click and drag this sound effect, you'll see that I'm trying to place it above the magnetic timeline. However, when I release, it immediately goes to underneath. And again, you can see that this clip has that connection point to this singular clip, so I can move this around and that audio will stay exactly where it was on that that specified clip. Now let's say you want to move a specific clip. However, the connection point on this title is actually over here on this clip and I want it to be attached to this secondary clip. Well, to achieve that, you're gonna need to push Command and Option on your keyboard, then click wherever you want to make that connection. So you'll notice now that my connection point has moved over to the right-hand side where I initially clicked. This can be super powerful so that you can make sure that your audio elements and your video elements are attached to the proper clips down on your timeline. Again, I can now move this over to the left and everything will slide with it. So there are many reasons why people love the magnetic timeline, but one of the most powerful is when it comes to using A-roll. A-roll being your talking heads, your interview clips, anything like that. So I'm gonna jump inside of this project that has some A-roll, and let's say I needed to go through and cut out all of the spaces where I'm not talking. We could zoom in with Command Plus, just like so. We could scroll through the timeline, find a portion I want to cut, and I'll go ahead and push B to get my blade tool. Click to create a cut click to create another cut, then push A to get my arrow tool and delete that space. Now an even faster way you could make these cuts is by using the range selection tool. I'm gonna push R to get the range selection tool. I'll click and drag over the portion of video that I want to delete and I can go ahead and delete that. So you could very quickly go through all of your timeline and delete out any portions that have dead air just by clicking and dragging and deleting. And what's super incredible is if I had a portion of video that had a whole bunch of edits down the road, I could still continue to make all of these edits without losing sync on those later bits of the video. So hopefully you can start to see how powerful the magnetic timeline can be. Now there are several instances where you might find that you don't want these clips to be attached. If you ever run into that, you're gonna need to use the tilde key. 
The tilde key can be found just under the escape key on most keyboards. However, if you don't have that key, I will show you how to get it in just a moment. I'll go ahead and push the tilde key and that will give me this small orange icon. I can go ahead and click and drag on any clip that I want to move and I'll just slide this over to the right hand side. And you'll notice that these elements did not slide with that specific clip where they were originally attached. Now that I've released the tilde key, I can go ahead and click and drag this clip and they are now still attached that one shot. If your keyboard does not have the tilde key, there's a good chance you're gonna need to add it as a keyboard shortcut. To do that, go on up to Final Cut Pro, go down to Commands, then select Customize. If this is set to the default command set, you're gonna need to go up to the top and select Duplicate. Once you've done that, go up to the top right hand corner and look up Override Connections. Once you have found Override Connections in this list, go ahead and select whatever key you would like to use and you can locate over here on the right hand side if you don't want it to have a modifier or if you want it to have a specific command set and just click and drag override connections to that specific point. Once you've done that, you'll need to push this key command and that will allow you to override the connections, thus locking your magnetic timeline. Another super powerful way to use the magnetic timeline is for J and L cuts. You'll see here that my audio is attached directly onto my video. Now, some might think you would need to right click and select detach audio but I strongly recommend you do not do that and you instead select expand audio. I do have another longer video explaining all of this that I'll try and link down below. Now that I've expanded it, you'll see that our video element is separated from our audio element. What this allows us to do is to select just that audio element and drag it out to be quite a bit longer. And that has allowed me to create what's called an L cut. You'll notice that the shape of this looks like an L, which is why it gets that name. And it just means that your audio is going to continue playing as the next video element is showing on screen. Additionally, we could create what's called a J cut by doing the exact same thing over on the left side. I'll just slide that out. Now this looks somewhat like a J and that just means that the audio is going to start before the video element starts playing on screen. Once you're all done with that, right click and then select collapse audio or another way is to use control S which will expand it or possibly the easiest way is to simply double click on your audio elements and that will pop them back into place. Now occasionally on your timeline, you're going to find yourself in a spot where you need to add some space and this can just be empty space as say a placeholder or for some other reason. If you ever run into that instance, move your playhead to the point where you want to add in that space. Then from there, push option W. That is going to insert a gap clip. A gap clip is completely empty. It doesn't have any transparency. It's not black, it's not white, it's nothing. It's just emptiness. From there, you can go ahead and click and drag to expand out that space or you can shorten it down. Another way to get gap clips is to use the position tool, which can be found here in this menu and we can go to the position tool. Then you can just click and drag on any video element and that will allow you to create a space in between the clips. Now I've noticed a lot of people use this position tool to replicate the same style that they might have in another video editing software, say like Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. But I strongly recommend that you really try and embrace the magnetic timeline. It might seem confusing at first, but once you start to get the hang of it, it is going to drastically speed up your video editing speed. Now, as I said earlier, above and below the magnetic timeline do not have any of the magnetic properties. However, you can enable that if you so desire. Let's say I have a whole bunch of clips up here above and I want them to still have that magnetic timeline feel. To do that, I can select both clips and push Command G. This will create what's called a secondary storyline and you can see that by that gray bar. What's cool about secondary storylines is I can click and drag this entire group all at once. You'll also notice that it has this gray connection point. If I want to, I can attach the secondary storyline to a different part of the timeline just by pushing Option, Command, and clicking in a separate portion. If you ever need to break apart a secondary storyline, you can go ahead and select the clips, right click, and then select lift from storyline. You can also do this with option, command, and up arrow. 
If I wanted these clips to overwrite whatever is down on the timeline, I could push Option, Command, and Down Arrow, and that will instantly place those clips down here on the timeline. But you'll also notice that my audio element is still extended out from this particular video element. That means that we're not overwriting the audio that was originally there on the magnetic timeline, we're only overwriting the video. Also, if you ever need to pop something off of this magnetic timeline, you can push Command, Option, and Up Arrow, or again, that's right click clicking and selecting lift from storyline. Now, as much as I love the magnetic timeline, there is one specific use case that I personally don't like using the magnetic timeline for. And that is when you are doing a musical edit. Oftentimes your cuts will be made to specific beats and notes in your music and you don't want to accidentally unsynchronize those by making an edit in your timeline. So for example, let's say that I wasn't particularly happy with this shot and maybe I needed to extend it out a little bit. By sliding this over, you'll notice that everything on my timeline is also sliding, thus unsynchronizing all of the edits that I made previously. You instead, put your music directly on the magnetic timeline and place all of your edits above the music just like so in a secondary storyline. If you wanted those magnetic timeline properties, again, you could push Command G to put them in a group or a secondary storyline. And if you ever needed to, you could break them out by pushing Command, Option, and Up Arrow. This is how I would personally work with a musical edit. And you still receive a lot of the benefits of the magnetic timeline. For example, maybe you need to cut your music shorter. You can go ahead and just delete out this portion and everything will immediately slide in. You could do a J cut with control S and slide the music just like so. You'll still have all of those capabilities for your music, but you probably won't want those for your visuals in case they get out of sync. If this video is helpful to you, consider pressing that like button and you may want to check out this video where I show you 10 beginner tips in Final Cut Pro that I really wish I had known when I first started. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.